Okay, thank you so much. And as Trevor mentioned, my name is Krista Canetta, and I currently work in the Manila Lab through the Center of Excellence on Health Disparities. And today, it is a joy for me to, to discuss my contributions to the differentiation of insulin-producing cell clusters from mouse embryonic stem cells. To delve into the significance of my project, it is essential that we first discuss type 1 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease that is characterized by the destruction of insulin-secreting pancreas cells, also known as beta cells. This occurs when CD4 positive helper T cells incorrectly identify our beta cells as foreign invaders and they activate CD8 positive cytotoxic T cells to destroy them. And as you can see in this illustration, without the presence of insulin in the system, then glucose levels build up in the blood, causing a condition known as hyperglycemia. The current clinical treatments for insulin for type 1 diabetes are currently far and few between and are restricted to lifelong insulin therapy, pancreas transplantation, and beta islet transplantation. There are many downsides, especially to the latter two treatments that are available due to a lack of suitable donors. And even for those donors that can be obtained, there are low success rates due to transplant rejection. And even for those transplants that are successful, there are fleeting glucose regulation, wherein which insulin is restored for only about one or two weeks before the patient becomes hyperglycemic again. And therefore, we hope to explore a less invasive and potentially more successful treatment by replating the beta islet cells through the differentiation of embryonic stem cells, or ES cells, into insulin-producing cell clusters, or IPCCs. And as we move forward in our project, our hypothesis is that the cell culture and differentiation of embryonic stem cells will reproduce the insulin-producing capacity of healthy beta cells in an adult mouse. And in this illustration, I have um, depicted the overall short-term goals of our project, wherein which we are first growing and expanding insulinoma cells which are from an insulin-secreting pancreas tumor to use as a positive control to compare against our IPCCs. For the differentiation itself, we are plating embryonic stem cells, or ES cells, with mitostoges, which are, which are considered as feeder cells for our ES cells. We are placing these in differentiation media, which is composed of different growth and differentiation factors, such as putrescine, which helps in cell mitosis, laminin, which helps in cell support, and insulin. Ultimately, after differentiation to IPCs, we hope to perform analysis by enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay, also known as ELISA, to evaluate levels of C-peptide. We want to evaluate C-peptide and not only insulin, because C-peptide is a byproduct of insulin production. Therefore, we reduce the risk of false positives that happens because we have insulin in the media. We don't want to mistake that, the absorption of that media, with fresh insulin production. Over the last six weeks, my emphasis has been on the culture and growth of these three cell, cell lines, the insulinoma cell lines, INS1, 8323, and 8213, as well as the culture and the treatment of mitostoses. As my emphasis has been on cell culture, the main protocols that I have been applying over the last six weeks are subculture, freezing, and thawing. We perform cell culture when cells become confluent or when there is a high amount of cell coverage in the tissue culture dish. When we do this, we give the rooms more cells to grow by splitting them from one plate to multiple dishes. Freezing and thawing are more involved with the expansion of cell lines, where in, in freezing, we, we freeze them and we store them into liquid nitrogen until we utilize them at a, at a later date. For thawing, this is when we retrieve them from the liquid nitrogen and we can continue applying these three protocols to expand them or to apply them in our experiments. And now I would love to start discussing the performance of my cell cultures. The first cell culture that I will be discussing is the culture of my STO cells, which are a mouse-derived fibroblast cell line that, is, um, that are considered embryonic cell feeder cells that we use by we, we play our embryonic stem cells on top of these and they provide an extracellular matrix for our stem cells to keep them, um, to keep them happy and to prevent them from being, on, from being compromised. However, before we play our embryonic stem cells on top of these, we must inactivate their ability to perform mitosis. 
because if we don't do this, then instead of supporting our ES cells, they instead continue to proliferate and they will begin competing with our embryonic stem cells. And in this figure, I have, uh, I have um, included a photo of my STO cells at day three at 100 times magnification. And here I have provided a time lapse of my STO cell culture at 40 times magnification. P um, means passage, which is how many times the cells have been subcultured in the past. And I provided their, their ages in days since their last thaw or their last subculture. And as you can see here throughout passage nine, we have healthy STO cells. But in passage 10, we froze them down and we wanted to test them for recovery. However, they demonstrated unexpected cell death, which we are contributing to contamination. However, as we all know, science is a process of trial and error. So we are, simply we are simply repeating this process so that we can progress to embryonic stem cell differentiation. This, the other two cell lines that I have been growing are the rat-derived um, insulinoma cell lines, INS1, with the subclones 832.3 and 832.13. We have chosen these two subclones out of the other subclones because, as you can see here, in response to um, the introduction of glucose, there is a higher amount of insulin response. And the, the white bars indicate um, their response to three millimoles of glucose, and the black bars indicate the response to 15 millimoles of glucose. And I would like you to note that the 832.13s have higher cell activity than the 832.3s. And this is, in, this is reflected in the time lapse of their cultures, with the 832.3s on top and the 832.3s on the bottom. By day two, the 832.13s are much more proliferative than the 832.3s, which are we are contributing to higher amounts of cell activity and higher amounts of cell-to-cell -cell communication, which is consistent with the literature. And now I'd like to discuss the results of my, of my cell cultures. So the embryonic stem cell culture remains in progress because we were set back a little bit by the contamination of our STO cells. However, this is in progress and should be completed tomorrow, actually. However, our insulinoma expansions were successful and we will be utilizing these as a positive control in our future experiments. And our future goals include beginning the protocol to differentiate embryonic stem cells to IPCCs. Since the Stowe culture will be completed tomorrow, we hope to begin this actually by next Tuesday. And we also hope to analyze our insulinoma cells with the same protocols that we'll be using to analyze our IPCs, IPCs in the future to confirm that their insulin production will match up with the literature. In the future, we also hope to optimize the IPC differentiation protocol. Currently, it is extremely time intensive. The protocol takes about a month and a half. We hope to cut this down to 18 days. And we also hope to increase the homogeneity of our IPCs by cell sorting through flow cytometry. In the future, um, hopefully by spring semester of next year, we hope to test for immunogenicity by implanting these IPCs into diabetic mice. And finally, I would like to acknowledge Professor Dr. Manilai for, um, for her continued support and guidance throughout this, um, my experience in the lab. Uh, Dr. Jesus Ceriza, he is the postdoc that I work um, directly underneath for his um, provision of the IPC protocol. Um, to Dr. Chris Newgard for his gift of the insulinoma cells, to lab members Corey Kane and Heather Thompson for providing additional cell culture treatments, um, to Bryce McClellan for technical training in the lab, and to finally, of course, to the Center of Excellence on Health Disparities for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Um, and now I would love to open the floor to questions. Uh, yes. Krista, I don't understand why you need supporter cells. Why can't the stem cells just grow by themselves in their own environment? What happens is if you plate embryonic stem cells directly onto a hard surface, like a, to like a tissue culture plate, then um, they won't last for very long. They become compromised. Um, the reason that we need STO cells is because the embryonic stem cells, they become supported by all the cell-to-cell -cell signaling. So it becomes more like a natural environment for them in vitro. Thank you. <laughs> okay, is there any other questions? Um, if, um, thank you then. <laughs>